Euphoria, the chemical smile. The first wave that hits is euphoria. A warm, glowing feeling spreads through your chest. Problems shrink. Worries fade. The world suddenly has softer edges. This isn't an accident. THC floods your brain with dopamine, the molecule of pleasure and reward. Your neurons light up like a city at night and for a moment, everything just feels good. But here's what they don't tell you. That happiness isn't free. Your brain is spending dopamine at normally rations carefully throughout the day. It's like maxing out a credit card of joy. When it wears off, you're left with less than what you started with. A subtle emptiness that makes the next high more tempting. Euphoria feels like a gift, but you're really just borrowing from your future self. Relaxation, when your brain hits the brakes. As euphoria settles, relaxation takes over. Your muscles unclench, your jaw loosens, tension you didn't know you were carrying melts away like ice in the sun. This happens because THC activates your endocannabinoid system, the network that regulates stress, pain, and emotional balance. It's like someone finally turned down the volume in your thoughts. For people living with chronic stress or pain, this can feel like salvation, but it's a dangerous comfort. The substance doesn't fix the source of your stress, it just mutes the alarm. Over time, your brain forgets how to calm itself naturally. You stop reaching for coping skills and start reaching for the plant. Relaxation becomes something you can only access through chemistry, not through yourself. Hunger, the munchies take over. Then comes one of the most famous effects, unstoppable hunger, the munchies. Suddenly, food doesn't just sound good, it sounds necessary. Sweet, salty, crunchy, it doesn't matter. Everything tastes like it's the best thing you've ever eaten, and you physically cannot stop. This happens because THC hijacks your hypothalamus, the brain region controlling appetite, and tricks it into thinking you're starving. At the same time, it amplifies your senses of smell and taste, making every bite more intense. That's why even terrible food tastes incredible when you're high. Scientists have found that THC literally makes your brain's hunger neurons fire even when your stomach is full. It's a false alarm your body can't ignore. The problem? Those calories are real, and they add up fast. Creativity. Genius or illusion? For many, this substance unlocks creativity. Ideas flow faster. Connections between thoughts become obvious. Music sounds deeper. Colors look richer, and suddenly, you're convinced you've cracked the code to the universe. Artists, musicians, and writers have chased this feeling for generations. This happens because THC increases blood flow to your frontal lobe, the brain's creative center, while loosening the rigid thought patterns you usually follow. Your mind wanders into unexpected territory, making connections it normally wouldn't. But here's the uncomfortable truth. While you feel brilliant, you're not always actually brilliant. THC amplifies your perception of your own ideas. That profound thought might sound ridiculous tomorrow. It's not a creativity boost. It's a confidence boost disguised as genius. Giggles. Laughter without reason. And then, the giggles. Uncontrollable, infectious laughter that erupts from nowhere. Something barely funny becomes hilarious. Even silence is funny. Your friends are funny. You're funny. Everything is funny. This happens because the substance dampens activity in areas of your brain that normally filter social behavior while amplifying emotional reactions. It lowers your ambitions and floods you with dopamine, making laughter feel more rewarding than usual. It's why the experience is so social for many people, but it's also wildly inconsistent. The same dose that leaves you laughing until you cry one night might leave you silent and anxious the next. Your brain's response depends on your mood, your environment, and factors you can't always predict. Red Eyes, the dead giveaway. Now let's talk about what everyone can see. Red Eyes. Bloodshot, glassy, unmistakable, no matter how relaxed you feel, your eyes give you away instantly. This happens because THC lowers your blood pressure, causing blood vessels throughout your body to expand, including the tiny capillaries in your eyes. More blood flow equals redder eyes. It's not harmful, just obvious. Eye drops can hide it temporarily, 
but for regular users, chronically red eyes become part of your appearance. Combined with the dryness this substance causes, your eyes can feel irritated for hours after the effects fade. Memory loss. Where did my thought go? Then there's the forgetfulness. Not dramatic memory erasure, but frustrating short-term memory loss. You start a sentence and lose it halfway through. You walk into a room and forget why. You're telling a story and the ending just... vanishes. This happens because THC disrupts your hippocampus, the brain's memory-forming center. It doesn't erase existing memories, it just makes it nearly impossible to create new ones in that moment. For occasional users, this fades when you sober up, but for heavy, long-term users, the impact becomes chronic. Your brain adapts to constant THC exposure and struggles to encode memories even when you're not under the influence. You're not just forgetting things while high, you're training your brain to forget. Paranoia, when the high turns dark. On the other side of this experience is paranoia, that creeping, crawling feeling that something's wrong, that people are staring, that you're in danger even though nothing's happened, your heart races, your thoughts spiral into worst case scenarios, the relaxation you felt minutes ago flips into pure anxiety. This happens because THC can overstimulate your amygdala, the brain's fear center. In high doses, or in people predisposed to anxiety, the substance doesn't calm your mind. It amplifies worry. Paranoia is more common with strong strains, edibles, or uncomfortable settings, but it's unpredictable. And for the people with underlying mental health concerns, chronic use can trigger lasting anxiety or other serious mental health challenges. What starts as a tool for calm can become a trigger for distress. Body high, melting into the couch. There's also the body high, that heavy, weighted sensation where your limbs feel warm and loose, like you're sinking into the furniture. Movement becomes effort. Everything feels soft and distant. It's especially strong with certain strains, and it's completely separate from the mental effects. This happens because cannabinoid receptors exist throughout your entire body, not just your brain. THC binds to these receptors in your muscles, nerves, and skin, altering how you perceive physical sensation. For people with chronic pain or tension, this can be deeply therapeutic, but it can also be overwhelming. Some users describe being unable to move, physically stuck even when they want to get up. Your body becomes too heavy to obey your mind. Pain relief, dulling the signal. Finally, pain relief. This is why the plant has been used medicinally for thousands of years. It genuinely works. THC and CBD interact with receptors in your nervous system that control pain signals, turning down the volume on sensations that would otherwise be unbearable. For people experiencing arthritis, migraines, nerve issues, or chronic conditions, this substance can provide relief when other options fail. But let's be clear, it's not a cure, it's a management. The pain doesn't disappear, it just becomes easier to ignore. And like any pain management approach, there's a cost. Your brain can become dependent on this relief, making it harder to cope without it. Pain relief is real, but so is the risk of needing it to feel normal. The bottom line. So that's the full picture. Euphoria, creativity and laughter on one side, memory loss, paranoia and dependence on the other. It's not the harmless plant some claim, but it's not the danger others make it out to be. It's a chemical that borrows you from your brain's natural balance and charges interest later. The question isn't whether these effects are real, it's whether you understand the trade-offs. Because every effect is a shadow, and every high has a cost. This substance doesn't define you, but it does change you, and that's something worth understanding.